I've been lucky enough to be able to work with LGBT youth and LGBT homeless youth for a lot of my career. I started out right out of high school. I think a lot of that was motivated by, I came out at 14 where I was the only out person in my high school. And it was definitely an environment where it was not set up for support for an LGBT person, much less a 14 year old LGBT person. And so I sort of had to advocate and create my own space as well as talk to peers about why my sexuality was legitimate and why I didn't think I was going to hell and why I had a right to be who I was. I felt very strongly that there were adults who were not doing their job <laughs> in that space who should be doing their job so that I didn't have to do all of that work that I was doing. And so as soon as I got out of high school, I was like, okay, if there aren't adults who are doing it, then I need to become that adult who does it. My name is Maggie Keenan Bolger, and I am a multi hyphenate. I direct and produce. I also perform occasionally, and I am a facilitator, sex educator, and I run a theater company called Honest Accomplice Theater. I grew up in inner city Detroit, where uh, it is not as progressive as New York or as New York is assumed to be. Homophobia happens everywhere, including New York, which I think is very important. People like to assume that New York is somehow a magical liberal bubble, which is not the case. So uh, sort of by default became an advocate for young people who were LGBT and eventually got to work within institutions that were working directly with young people who did not have adults and in fact had adults who really betrayed them or they had been kicked out because of their gender identities or sexual orientation and had people who were very actively telling them that who they were was not okay. LGBT youth, homeless youth in particular, are at a huge disadvantage because most young people have advocates in the form of their parents who are fighting for whatever their needs are. And LGBT young people do not have those ad advocates. And so it was really important for me to be a person who was there to be like, listen, I am living a good life. My sexuality is a part of who I am and it is also a part of who you are. And that is awesome. <laughs> and you are awesome because of that not just in spite of that, but because of it. Honest Accomplice Theater is a company that I co-founded. We produce mostly device theater and media. It's all from the perspective of cis women and trans folks. And we have an ensemble of people who are from the ages of 20 to 70 and from a variety of backgrounds, all of whom are historically excluded from theater and media in general. Trans people, women, people of color, people of size, women over 60. There's so many different categories of folks who have been historically excluded from media and theater. We produce pieces about different subjects like sexuality, the body, gender, things like that. Hello, and welcome to the Transliteracy Project, created by Honest Accomplice Theater. I'm your host, Maybe Burke. This episode is for educators, leaders, and anyone who wants to make a more gender-inclusive community. So the Transliteracy Project came about after we were doing a piece of ours called The Birds and the Bees Unabridged, and we had in it a character who is genderqueer, and we got a lot of questions about that character after the show. And we figured out pretty quickly that we needed more information about that particular subject. And our trans ensemble members were really excited about figuring out a way to make a piece of art that was more accessible to more people and to more communities than just the people who we could hit going on tour with a piece of theater. Let's review some terms. We'll be using the terms trans and cis in this episode. Trans means across or on the other side. And generally, it's used to refer to people like me who identify as a gender other than the one they were assigned at birth. Cis means on the same side, 
and is generally used for people like me who identify as the same gender as they were assigned at birth. And what it is is a series of videos that is created by trans people that basically goes over the sort of things that they wish that they could have people know about them and their experiences so that every time they meet someone, they don't have to educate every single person that they meet, <laughs> uh, which is often the case with trans folks where they're sort of the default educators. So instead they can sort of send them to our website and be like, here you go, here's some information about how to use pronouns, here's some information about gender labels, and some information about how, if you're an educator, how to support trans people in the classroom, things like that. Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever virtual theatrical experience presented by Honest Accomplice Theater. Unmuted was sort of a funny experience. It started out with a project generated at the very beginning of quarantine in March. I was looking for a place to be creative where there wasn't the pressure to produce something amazing, where I feel like a lot of creators were feeling like they needed to, you know, write the next great American novel. And so I reached out to a bunch of folks who I considered to be artist innovators and asked them if they wanted to meet for one hour every week to create something. And so we used those prompts to sort of rethink about what we wanted theater to look like. Judith, any advice you might have for us earthly beings? Advice? I wear a mask. Plagues aren't fun. Simon says, tell your stuffed animal it's a piece of shit. Simon says, throw your stuffed animal in the trash. Simon says, don't feel bad. You were only following orders. Wasn't that a fun <laughs> game? <laughs> Hi, honey, one second. I just have to post. My 70 year old grandmother is like totally going viral, but not in the COVID That's again. okay. It's okay, sweetie. There was a group of about 20 of us who came together and decided that we would create a devised theater piece, uh, even though theater as we knew it was not in existence because we couldn't come together on a stage and we couldn't come together in a rehearsal room. But we did have this new format of Zoom that none of us were really all that familiar with, but that offered a lot of new opportunities for play and for exploration, uh, which was sort of exciting in and of itself to be able to really dive deep into what new things we could do. I don't know if you know this, but Black Lives Matter supports Palestine. Oh, supporting Black Lives Matter doesn't make you anti-Semitic, mom. One of the pieces was actually based off of uh, my own experience that I had as a person with a chronic illness, um, sort of navigating the world. And it was actually a, a big part of why I started the project to begin with. A while ago, I was diagnosed with this movement disorder called cervical dystonia. Obviously, chronic illness at 26, I'm supposed to be doing lots of other things. I was an ecstatic, but figured I needed some info. So, cervical dystonia is dystonia of the neck muscles. And according to WebMD, dystonia is a movement disorder in which a person's muscles contract uncontrollably. Okay, I could have told them that. Theater in and of itself had become kind of unsustainable for me, where having to do tech week or having to do rehearsal schedule as it is, um, was not something that I physically was capable of doing. There were other people in the, in the group who had similar situations. It was folks who, for a variety of reasons, be it like having to work a certain amount of hours because of, you know, fi for financial reasons, or because theater didn't have roles for them because of their identities. Roles for trans people on Broadway or in, like, theater that pays for someone to make a living are infinitesimal. Like, it is not sustainable for a trans person currently to make a living being a professional performer. Okay, my next question is this. Why are you in danger? 
Ooh, great question. Take it away, contestants. And so for so many of us, our relationships with theater were tenuous. And so being able to suddenly participate in theater in a way that was new and different and being able to do it without feeling like I was asking everyone else to make an accommodation for me because everyone else had to do it from their living rooms as well. <laughs> I think that opening those doors really make it possible for us to challenge the sort of norms of what theater can be. Thank you, newsroom, and welcome back to the Queer Ancestry Pride Parade. Here come the queer suffragettes. I mean, Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton were totally gay, am I right? Oh, well, I don't know if uh, they would define themselves as, I mean, they didn't really have that terminology, but I feel like I'm seeing a lot more folks incorporating new technology, new ideas, new ways of thinking about what theater looks like. I'm sorry, everyone, I have to go. You know, I think we should all just take comfort in the fact that Ralph is in a better place now. And certainly more people certainly more white people <laughs> talking about the ways that theater is racist and the ways that theater is oppressive and the ways that theater needs to change. Uh, whereas I feel like it is something that BIPOC folks have been talking about for a very long time. I think that it's really important to know that Broadway isn't the only place that's making theater. And what I'm hopeful is that this has moved the dial in a way that it would not have been moved as quickly had things been going on as they usually had. I think that when we go back to theater as it was, I think that things will not have moved as much as people want it to, but I think that it will have gone somewhere. I think especially in off-Broadway theaters and in less commercial theater spaces. And my hope is that that will really heavily influence what ends up being made further down the line. Some of the best art has been made in the hardest times. I think creativity and theater and art can be used as a tool for dealing with so much of that, figuring out how to process that. I think that we'll get a lot of good art out of it, and I think that it will be hard, and I think that it will also have some unexpected benefits.